That sounds weird. Hi, so I'm Farron, uh, Director of Engineering at Moving Worlds, uh, Black Matrix everywhere, so on the internet. Um, this is where the slides are. It's the only place on my slides. I should have put it in the back. Um, so um, just a little brief overview. Um, I'm going to be discussing uh, server.inject and uh, register server methods in the HAPPY framework. Uh, I hope by the end of the framework you'll know when and how to use uh, both of them. Um, so the inspiration of this talk came from, um, you know, discovering issues while I was developing our product um, for the public launch. Um, too long didn't write. <laughs> we used uh, server inject as a, a stopgap, so we made a mistake. Uh, essentially, we found bugs uh, before we went live. Um, uh, kind of the backstory is is that you know I wrote a, a lot of the API. Um, a coworker um, was going to work on uh, the front end app. Um, but then we had some designer issues, and he had to jump on that. So, you know, I, I think what it was is, you know, I was going through the documentation of Happy, and I was like, what can I do to, you know, do this front end stuff? And I saw Servant Inject. It was like, I could do it with that. Um, I wish I would have gone down a little bit forth, but if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be here talking about it today. So. So server inject, uh, it uses the shop module um, for performing injections without actually making uh, any network connections. Um, so it takes two arguments, uh, options, callback. Um, so options, um, you, could, you could either send it a string or an op uh, object. Um, some of the properties of the objects are method, URL, headers, payload, credentials, simulate. Um, I wrote a bunch of stuff up there that I'm going to be talking about. like elsewhere. So um, then there's the callback, um, which um, gets uh, one function, which is an object, and um, uses status code, headers, payload, raw payload, um, just a raw object, and then the results. And uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, so when and why you should uh, use server inject, uh, great use case, testing. Um, here I have some code that kind of just goes over here. You can kind of see like you, uh, we're, we're calling the URL Timmy and uh, we're looking at the status code, see if it's 200. Okay, um, and then we're also looking at the, the available property sent on it and we want to make sure it's set to no. And it's basically that. Um, so uh, I feel like I'm talking really, really loud because of things in my bag. Um, do things that server, sorry. So uh, also it's useful when you're doing things in your routing that is very complex uh, and you can't really abstract it into a method. Um, also, you, by using server inject, you avoid network uh, stack and um, potentially you can also isolate networking issues that way. Um, the cred credential object is really interesting too because you can bypass, you know, authenticated strategies using it. Um, so when you shouldn't use it, um, anytime you're not testing, I, I don't know. So uh, res uh, as we found out in uh, our, some of the issues we found, um, res results not always uh, available and I actually found this issue when I was using SQLize. I, I, I don't remember the details of why. Um, so I had to use res.payload which kind of sucked because I had to parse it so I could look at the data and then I had to re-encode it to send it to the client and that's a lot of waste you know memory wise. Also uh, I kind of kind of thought that there's a little bit of an implicit assumption that um, Whatever you're injecting uh, on, uh, you're assuming that it's correct. And if, if it's not, like, because you're using server inject and that's not correct, there's so much overhead. And that can cause, you know, some debugging issues. So, yeah, a as a result, you know, once I figured this out, once I, I saw some of the, the issues, an another issue we had was because the, uh, the, the, uh, the way it encoded on res.payload. Um, uh, so happy is UTF-8. Uh, when it translates over the wire, it's ASCII. And also, because of that level of, in, uh, of indiscretion or whatever, uh, it 
we, we would see like encoding issues on our site. And so then that's when we were like, oh, we got a code refactor. We need to use server methods. So registered methods, they're awesome because you can use them to you know, share common functions uh, by attaching them to your server object. Um, this means you don't have to require common uh, modules all over in your plugins, you know, so um, makes your code more dry. Um, you can also cache your methods, which is really awesome with Happy's native caching. And you can change the this context within your methods. So uh, you need to, of course, give your method a name and you'll be able to ac access it later through server methods name or if you're in kind of a handler, you'd have to do, I, I think, request server methods name. Um, so a neat feature I thought was that uh, you can uh, register a name such as user.get and it'll register it as a nested object. And I think this is a great way to actually kind of create like a, a kind of method namespace. You know, like uh, here you see that I binded it to um, ha our happy SQLize uh, user model. And uh, then use the SQLize find and count all function. Um, so you also have to give it a function. And uh, it takes this format. It's an arbitrary amount of arguments with their next callback. And then the next is pretty standard. You know, error first, your result, and then an optional TTL for when you want your cache to expire on that uh, object. Um, you also can give it some objects. Uh, objects are bind, cache, callback, generate key. Um, Cache is the normal as server.cache, so that's pretty straightforward. Callback, I haven't used this, but apparently um, you can make your function meth uh, server methods synchronous. And then your, your callback actually takes a little bit of a different form. And then uh, there's the generate key for when your uh, methods don't actually return you know, a, a string or a boolean or a number or a JSON object. So then you figure out a way to do that, and then you could actually utilize the cache. So how do we do that? How, how do we actually make a, a server method? Um, there's two, two main ways uh, as a separate parameter. So you define your function, and then uh, you register it um, that way. Server method foo, foo, that way. And then you could do it as an object, which I, I, I prefer this method better because it's easy to read. Um, just an object, name, method, and options. And then, of course, you could do it again uh, as an array of objects. So why should you use uh, server methods? Um, you know, if you want to use dry again, you avoid having to require all the common modules everywhere in your code. And uh, you just use it on the server object. So, and then if you also want to cache your, your items, it's, it's a little bit more difficult and doesn't really work on server inject. Uh, when it should be used, um, if it doesn't fit your use case, which means complexity, or if you only per perform the, the operation once, because there's a slight overhead to just call the server methods. So just before I close, so, um, I, I did a, a little bit of uh, code here. Like, I, I really wanted to kind of get into like, like what we're looking at, but I couldn't really figure out like how to get the actual like memory stack. Um, but I, I could get the latency. So this is what I did with the, the Linux AB tool. And a, as you can see, like just, just calling uh, get users directly, um, you know, takes uh, about, gives, gives you about 4.33 4 uh, requests per second. Um, when you do it with the wrapper, um, which I have directly from this code right here, you know, it's just wrapping that code. And it, it's way much slower. Um, it's terrible. <laughs> and then uh, if, if you do it via method, you can see that it's a little bit less performant than calling it directly. And then when you actually use the cache, it's just insane. 98% of the requests are under 150, 150 milliseconds. So use the cache whenever you can. Oops. Oh, where am I? <laughs> OK. so. In summary, uh, use server injects for your tests in Happy Framework. Um, elsewhere, and if, only, if and only if your logic is too complex to be abstracted into a server method. Use server methods if you need to use the same pieces of code 
in uh, multiple locations and bonus points if you speed up your responses with caching. Thanks.